Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market preparation video for October 9th, 2019. Well, here we go again with a, another news report um, whipping the market in a different direction overnight. So for all of you who might be short, um, you know, you're going to get slapped on the hands again today with this ridiculous price action and this emotional um, charged market as we continue to flip-flop all over the place depending on the news. So what happened last night? Well, actually it was early this morning, about 6 a.m. Eastern Time, Bloomberg reported an unnamed official, apparently close to the trade situation, now says that China is willing to make a partial deal. Now, no big surprise there. Um, what China apparently, according to the, the story, is agreeing to, they're agreeing to buy farm products, um, but um, refuse to budge on any of the substantive issues um, in the trade negotiations. Um, and what they want as a concession, they'll go ahead and agree to buy farm products as long as the U.S. doesn't raise any more tariffs. So let's think about that for a second. If you're on the side of the Trump administration trying to negotiate, let's see. Let's give them what they want because their folks are getting hungry over there and um, food prices are rising, creating unrest. Let's give them what they want and then promise them um, that we are going to stop the thing that's hurting them. But let's forget about all the substantive th things just because we want to make a short-term deal. Now, to me, that just seems ludicrous that the White House would even consider that. But who knows? Maybe, maybe um, recessionary pressures in the market, maybe re-election pressures could um, sway the president to make a decision like that. But he has said in the past, unless there is a strong bilateral agreement, um, tariffs will increase on the 15th of this month. So negotiations begin on Thursday. Can you guys imagine a situation where we whip right back down um, in this market? So I'm gonna just echo out there um, and continue to repeat this for everyone. Um, please be very careful. Chasing these news reports like this, we could see, we hey, it's just one news story, one tweet away from whipping the, uh, the other direction. So let's take a look at the technicals on the chart and see if we can see anything new here. Even with this gap up this morning that we're looking at, we are still within a downtrend. Certainly there's some hopefulness. We want this trade situation to be over, but let's keep in mind that as we, all of that hopefulness does not pay the bills. And if we continue to be fooled by these um, overnight reversals and we chase them around like a chicken with our head cut off, we're going to end up destroying our accounts in this process. You know that old saying, uh, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And in that, in that statement, we have um, we have a lot of what's been going on. We've been bouncing back and forth and emotionally chasing this market all over the place. So let's keep in mind, really nothing has changed here. I also want to point out um, some pretty critical points here that m many folks might be missing, and that is the fact that our 50-day moving average, notice how our 50-day moving average is flattened out and is actually starting to turn lower here. That's not a good sign for us. Now, of course, if we can get some kind of a trade deal, if we can remove some of these um, uncertainties in the market, we could certainly power right on through and come right back up. But there are a lot of uncertain issues out there to deal with. So be very, very careful chasing the market right into this price resistance area um, and, and getting caught up in the emotional drama of the day. Remember, this is an unnamed trade official. We don't know who this is. We don't know how close they are to the negotiations. We don't know anything. Uh, but the market is responding radically 
um, as a result of that report. And what seems to be an unlikely situation that the White House would agree to, if, if you ask me. So watch that carefully. Let's uh, take a look at the SPY. Um, SPY also in a very similar situation, gapping up this morning substantially. And we are still looking at that 50-day moving average declining. We are looking at price resistance levels in this chart that are substantial. And this whip is um, creating, um, you know, tremendous volatility in the price um, of um, stocks and uh, options, especially options. Options are just all over the place with this volatility. So let's just watch this closely and let's be really, really careful here about um, getting fooled once again to chase uh, into this drama. Uh, at least on the good news side is, hey, at least it's to the to the upside today and not gapping to the downside as um, probably a lot of folks were expecting that we would see this morning. But um, let's just cool, cool ourselves off here a little bit and realize that um, we could, again, just whip right back down. Um, let's take a look at the cues. Cues failing here at its 50-day moving average notice our 50-day moving average is in decline we have a substantial level of price resistance right in here so this gap up open this morning although this is it's a nice bullish gap up open we're coming up underneath that 50-day moving average let's just be really really careful here about chasing into this um, as this news continues to spin remember um, negotiations begin on Thursday, we still have that, you know, the uh, Chinese ministry said that, you know, prepare, there's going to be a retaliation for the U.S. Uh, blacklisting companies and um, putting um, officials, Chinese officials, on um, travel ban lists and things like that because of their treatment of Muslims in the country. So, uh, wow. Um, this this is just like a soap opera, and you couldn't even write it if uh, you couldn't even come up with the with the scenarios here if you tried as this drama unfolds. So be really careful. Let's take a look at IWM. IWM certainly is bearish, and there's no question about this. Um, IWM has been in a long-term downtrend. Um, we now are in a situation where our 50-day moving average has crossed down below the 200. We are at least holding a very critical support, and we'll have to watch this closely. The gap up this morning certainly moves us away from that, helps in that fear uh, that we could lose that support. But once again, um, this is just one new story in an event that just continues to unfold and create lots and lots of volatility. So watch that closely. If this were to drop below here, there's a big open space down here uh, for that IWM to go. Watch that closely. Let's take a look at um, our VIX this morning. VIX has been kind of all over the place, but it did kind of hold the technical patterns that I drew out the other day in this chart. If we take a look at um, these support and resistance levels, I had made mention that um, holding this support area would um, spike that, that fear, and we have done that. Now this morning, the gap up open on this news, probably going to pull that fear back a little bit, and really I'm not too concerned about any of this until we really start to break above this little downtrend. If we break above and hold in here, that's where we could get some real selling coming into play. And to me, that just seems like one new story away uh, from that occurring. So uh, be very, very careful how you trade this market. Be very cognizant of the fact that we are a news-driven market that we can turn on about, a, you know, on a dime, half a heartbeat. Um, this market can reverse. Um, on these news reports. So just be very, very careful. Um, we're a very sensitive news-driven market right now, and that can create some very dangerous uh, trading for a lot of folks. So let's just watch that close. Let's take a look at T2122. 
Now, T2122, this is some of the good news in the market. T2122 indicator, let's go to a daily. I don't know why that keeps switching to a uh, two-day. But on that daily chart, you can see T2122. We were back down here in this um, uh, bullish reversal zone um, yesterday after that uh, substantial sell-off. Back down here in this reversal zone. So today's bounce up. Really not that big a surprise. And uh, this morning we're getting that little bit of a relief. So we're bouncing this back up. What what I hate to see in this market is if we just continue this whip, 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 whip. And we have experienced that in the past where it's just virtually impossible, particularly for a swing trader to trade when we get that kind of whip on these news reports. And that's why I'm suggesting an awful lot of caution. Be very, very careful. We whip back up here on this morning's news and get another tweet or a different news story and right back down we go so um, watch that pretty close let's take a look at our economic calendar today see if it has something to say about the market direction today and really we have a, a relatively light economic calendar for today we have the jots report here this morning at 10 a.m i doubt with all of this trade drama going on jots report is really going to provide the impetus for a whole lot of inspiration higher or lower but of course if it's a surprise number then that of course can move the market around i think probably the bigger thing um, of the day that we're going to have to worry about is first jerome powell speaks again yesterday he let everyone know that they're planning to expand the balance sheet to help help out banks he says it's he specified it's not quantitative easing, but let's face the truth that it is when you print money so that the banks can continue to operate, um, it's quantitative easing. And so um, he's speaking again today at 11 o'clock. We'll have to watch that report pretty closely. In case he reveals anything new, we have the EIA Petroleum Status Report. Obviously, that can move um, oil markets around. We have another Fed speaker here at 11 um, to consider as well. And then probably the news of the day is going to be the FOMC Minute Release. Um, pretty common that the market goes stale, quiet, choppy, um, up to the release of those FOMC minutes. Honestly, I think that's a little bit nutty because I really don't think we're gonna learn anything more from the FOMC minutes, but there you have it. Um, it's likely to occur. And, um, and what what we will learn is that there were you know three dissenting votes and it may be it may come out showing that it may be challenging for another rate cut market would not be happy about that so let's watch that close as that uh, drama unfolds there as well so let's take a look at our earnings calendar and our earnings calendar we really don't have much going on right now you know we're getting ready we're just gearing up for the next round of earnings um fourth quarter earnings to start happening so we've got these stragglers coming in right now we have eight companies reporting earnings today i don't see any of them at all that would be market moving or even particularly notable today so kind of keep that in mind um yeah, even though these companies are reporting i wouldn't expect them to provide a whole lot of addition or subtra subtraction to these news reports moving the market as I'm speaking right now, Dow futures are up 197 points, pointing to a big gap up open. We'll see if we actually get some buying follow through or if this turns around again. Um, who knows? Um, it makes no sense to me how an unnamed report saying that we're going to get a partial deal that has no substance in it whatsoever um, can make the market react like this. But that's what we're looking at in this emotionally driven uh, market. So just be very, very careful how you approach this for the for the day and be careful not to get caught up in the drama. Focus on the price action of the chart. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great profits. And if this is the first time you've seen these videos, please do me a favor. Click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also 
click that bell icon when it pops up so you can make sure that you're notified every time I post one of these videos. You know, folks, the purpose of these videos is not to predict anything. It's to look at the technicals of the chart and try to decide how we should approach that market for the day. And, and today I've just been repeating it over and over and over. Caution, caution, caution. Be careful how you approach that market for today. Measure your risk very carefully just in case that next tweet, that next news report reverses us once again. Um, watch for those um, signals to occur and stay focused to that price action. And if you find these videos helpful, please do me a favor and click that thumbs up button and also leave a comment. Um, all of that, all of that uh, feedback helps the algorithm show these videos to more folks and helps us continue to grow this channel. Thank you very much to everyone who does that. And some of you guys, your comments are just fabulous. I mean, they're so humbling. I truly, truly appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Thank you very much. So let's take a look at some stocks that uh, may be setting up. There's a lot of whip in these stocks. It's really, really difficult to get to put your hands on much of anything that you can count on very strongly. But there are a few things out there showing some signs of success. One, one I want to bring to your attention might be Campbell Soup. Now, Campbell's is one of those defensive sector stocks um, where people will run to for relative safety and um, Camels is holding in this consolidation pattern. I was hoping this would take off a little bit sooner than it has, but we're just resting in this pattern, holding in here. And notice we've elevated just a little bit in that consolidation. All it would take is a little bit of bullishness to maybe get this going on its next move higher. So keep an eye on CPB, just one for your watch list. Certainly nothing to take action on uh, right now or today. And, and, and by the way, that goes for any any uh, stock that I talk about in these videos, they're just meant as a watch list stock, something to keep an eye on, um, not a recommendation to buy or sell any security whatsoever. Let's take a look at Costco. Now, Costco has been kind of interesting to me. Um, I was watching this for a potential failure right in here and the breaking down of this, but Costco had earnings. Uh, they they kind of disappointed on their earnings report um investors kind of hoping for more i guess than what they got um, in the chart and so right now i'm looking at costco kind of up here testing around some resistance levels but the good part of this chart is that we've kind of broken this downtrend so we look for that rally we look for any kind of a either a consolidation or a resting pullback and look for those buy signals to set that new trend in play. So Costco should be on your list to be maybe watching that for that potential move higher and it's holding up pretty darn well. Let's take a look at Apple. Now Apple pulled back yesterday by the end of the day. It had started up, um, but Apple's been holding up quite well. And as you know, their phone, their new phone sales apparently are going quite well. And if I mark this trend on here, you can see we're holding in this trend pretty darn well. Even though that we're getting this volatility pullback, any rest consolidation back over into this trend could set up an opportunity to move higher. So if we are going to get bullish in the market, it's stocks like this that I want to be paying attention to uh, for those trades. Now, if you're looking for um, places where you can go for some relative safety, if you're tired of this back and forth and the whippiness that we're seeing in this market, you might want to take a look at um, some of the real estate investment trusts that have been just moving up strongly and i mean a lot of them moving up strongly what's happening here is a lot of these real estate investment trusts will be moving up strongly um, because everyone is seeking that dividend yield this is kind of the annualized dividend yield up here on my chart and so they're seeking a strong dividend yield and avoiding some of the volatility of the market. If you're looking for some of that, you might want to take a look at some of these real estate investment trusts right now. They're holding up quite well and showing signs of strength overall. So keep those in, in mind. Take a look at um, stocks like uh, in some retail areas like Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree breaking through this resistance up here. We had that 
that ugly pullback, but it tried to come back up yesterday just a little bit. So trying to hold in this price range, Dollar Tree seems to be hanging on pretty well overall, and we might want to watch that. And here's another uh, Dollar General holding up quite well um, in this consolidating move, holding up in this area, and all we need is some kind of inspiration to maybe get this going to the upside. So let's watch that closely. If you're looking for some short trades, you know, you might take a look. Um, Caterpillar, Caterpillar uh, failing at its downtrend. This is certainly continuing to look short, um, pushing down, rallying back up, failing at its downtrend. Now it's gapping up this morning with everything else, but we're still moving in this downtrend. Look for those downtrending stocks as they consolidate over to their trend or push back up to their trend for those failure, potential failure patterns on down. We'll want to watch those pretty close if you're looking for some of those shorts. Everyone, I I want to wish you all a fantastic day and I want to wish you great, great gains in your trading today. And if you're struggling as a trader, I just want to remind you that you, remember, you don't have to trade every day to be successful. And if you find yourself just fighting the market and every day is just this battle back and forth where you're you're dealing with your own emotions along with the market emotion, it's time to back off, rethink your plan, reevaluate. Um, but never give up. Never give up on that dream of being a full-time trader. Um, I can tell you for me, having been able to be here uh, full-time now for 14 years, it is awesome. And I, I wanna encourage you all that if I can figure this out, anyone can. So everyone have a great day. I wish you all the best and we'll talk to you all bright and early Thursday morning. Have a good one.